uh, we continue uh, our discussions in uh, the fourth section about the superposition principle and here we focusing on the how to apply the superposition principle and to help us uh, solving the diffraction of the beam problems and if basically the uh, again from the previous sections as I mentioned um, because here we're dealing with is actually in mathematics a uh, linear system and diffraction of the beam uh, in under small deflections and that is a linear system and that can be told by these differential equations EI, Y, this one so basically this is a linear differential equation because of these natures we are able to uh, superpose um, of the conditions into the original problem statement and again because of the, the linearity and uh, we are able to apply the method of superposition and most of the time the uh, superposition, superposition principles is applied to uh, decompose the originally um, multiple loading situations into subsystems and each of the subsystems corresponding to one single type of the loading. So we look at this example here. Here we can see there is a beam and under simply supported at the two ends here and this beam has two kinds of loading. The first kind is we call the 150 kilonewton, this is called the point loading. Or sometimes people call this called the concentrated loading. Then the second type is uh, with the you know that is called the distributed loading. So basically, here we can decompose. And for example, and let me make the things more complicated. For example, if you would have additional point loading, say P equal to say 200 kilonewton here, then of course you can continue to plus the additional uh, case, so that is the beam. Then in this case, the third case you can consider is 200 kilonewton here. Okay, so you can continue, depends on how many type, how many kinds of the loading you can continue to decompose. So basically that is the the first application of the uh, the method of superposition principle. So once we have decomposed, then you simply solve for individual systems. Say this is a case one, so you can solve for for case one and solving this equation corresponding to this case. Then what is that? And then continue. We can skip the detail at this moment and for this case this is a case 2 you can solve for diffraction as a function of x and equal to something something then in this way this diffraction of this original problem simply is the superposition of the result okay so as long as you are able to solve for the diffraction for individual system, if you continue, you can have this one. Okay, so you can continue. So basically, you simply just superpose. This one is called the superpose. We superpose the solutions of individual subsystems into the original uh, the answers, the answer to the original problem here. So this is the principle and for this particular problem right now we have two loading case so the remaining slides I'm going to dedicate it our time, I'm going to dedicate our time to uh, in detail how to solve for this and how to solve for this, okay? So that is the loading case one and basically here is the exercise of the section one here we have done before. So here I adopt the I utilize this is a moment diagram okay so here uh, again we can refer to chapter 5 and about how to draw the bending and uh, shear and bending moment uh, diagram okay so that is the result from there so from here you can see this is the M of X 
and in this segment equal to this and in the other segment equal to this so we put into two segments in this first segment in this domain the m equal to this one so you simply solve for the diffractions and with the m equal to this okay so you integrate uh, twice and you come up with the integration constant so the integration constant can be solved for by using the the boundary conditions for in this domain the boundary condition the first one is at point a so at point a we know the diffraction equal to zero okay and we need one more the other one is probably we can utilize is the diffraction at here okay diffraction at here and that means diffraction at uh, l over four so here we kind of de stuck there but let me leave it okay let me leave it and again here i have utilized the notations i simply use the subject one okay this subject one to indicate this is the segment here we're dealing with they, let me call that second segment one okay now we move to the uh, second segment so this is the uh, corresponding is the second segment i use this notation here okay so in the second segment the same thing and here we have the m of x obtained by this you simply solve for the diffraction equations and integrate twice and you come up with the integration constant the two integration constant and again we need boundary conditions and again in this segment the we try to adopt the legitimate uh, the the legitimate boundary conditions the first one is the diffraction at b equal to z zero so that is at point b okay diffraction equal to zero then we come up with the uh the the middle point here at the middle point there and we know the diffraction is this and such that assuming the beam is not broken or fractured during diffraction then the beam must be continuous at point D okay so beam must be continuous so such that the diffractions from the first segment and second segment they are common at D here the diffraction must be the same as well as their slope must be the same okay so under this case you have the one two three and four boundary conditions then you are able to solve for c1 c2 c3 and c4 okay so solving this one will take a little bit time but that is the answer here so you have c1 c2 c3 c4 then basically here you have the total complete information about the diffraction which means by the two equation here keep this in mind so that is for loading case one then we come to the loading case two so loading case two is the distributed loading so from here we start with these equations and that'll be easier okay so here we integrate four times so for this case we have the one two three four uh, c1 c2 c3 c4 integration constants and then we need the four boundary conditions and that being listed here and one is diffractions okay zero and also at point the at end the a and b there's a free end so that means we are uh, at the free end the moment equal to zero here okay so again this is the exercise from the previous sections if needed you can rewind and go back to watch the videos from section two i believe okay from section two and so you can get more information there so with the four boundary conditions and then here you spend a little bit time about five to ten minutes and you get this description here okay or equivalently you simply divide the ei to the right hand side and you get this one so this for the loading case two so now we come to superpose the individual system here so now for this case you can see i try to distinguish and in the way is this and for the for this subsystem 
this is a result we obtained from the uh, the, the two slides before and this is the result summarized from the previous slides okay so basically with those information you have complete descriptions about the diffraction of the spin okay and now for example if we want to find out what is the maximum diffraction okay so how to find it and again because for this particular uh, loading case we need to describe the diffraction separately in two separate sections so here for example to find out the maximum then we can try to uh, look into the the information uh, segment from segment so we first look at what happened in this segment here okay so assuming the maximum occurred there then we know the maximum occurred is the where the slope equal to zero so we look at in this segment whether these conditions will be satisfied or not okay so we have the total descriptions in this segment this is the diffraction okay and in this one and this is the loading and this is the loading case too so this is the loading case one okay so again in this segment the loading case two have the uh, description here so you add it up and then you take the derivative and setting the derivative equal to zero here and try to solve for what is the value of x for this case you found oh, x equal to 2.36 what that mean so here for our case the l equal to 8 okay so 2.36 that means in this segment is x between 2 and 0 but here you found here you assume it occurred in this one you assume that occurred in this one but you found the result is this so basically that contradict okay so that means the maximum shouldn't occur not here so in this case the only possibility that means the maximum will occur in this segment that means the maximum will occur in uh, in this segment okay so you proceed right, right now in the second segment and that is the information here for the second segment and that is you pick up this piece and you pick up this piece for y prime okay setting up y prime equal to zero and you found the x equal to this one so basically this, the maximum should be around here okay so once you have this one then you simply uh, use the information corresponding to the second segment for diffraction then you can find the answer okay so this is the kind of the more practical examples we continue on the the second demonstrations and again here we try is to apply the superposition principle and again here we try to uh, uh, the superpose the loading case and for this one basically you can see this one if you see this one basically is the loading case of the whole things assuming the loading distribute loading applied to the whole thing then subtract this portion here okay so simply just like here and we have a loading case one that is distributed uh, throughout the whole thing and we plus the loading that is upward in this case this portion will be empty will be zero okay so that is the this uh, example is just basically showing you the different <coughs> thinking different thinking how to decompose the loading okay and i feel this <coughs> this illustration is very typical so i pick up this one so now remaining again and let me call this is the y the loading case one so that the diffraction and corresponding result is this one so the result for this case should be equal to y1 x plus y2 x okay so now the remaining slides we dedicate our time to individual loading case and we see <coughs> For the loading case one that is the our previous exercise and they may not to repeat the whole calculations and basically that's the result okay so assuming you know how to do it but you can try to start from here eiy double uh, force and 
di <coughs> dy and dx force okay so that basically equal to minus omega and for this case it is constant okay omega is constant so you integrate four times and then you should be able to get the ei okay so for this case here is a loading case one so i need to add it up this is a loading case one here okay on the other side and uh, you can also check out from our appendix d uh, in the textbook and appendix d and that is the loading case and that is the scenario two from here you can verify with your calculation basically diffraction maximum diffraction the magnitude equal to this and this minus sign simply means it's downward okay so that means downward and the magnitude of the slope equal to this and here has the minus sign the minus sign simply is meaning this one okay so this is the slope and take the tangent at the tip here the basically the minus sign simply is meaning the uh, clockwise okay so here is a sign convention and use uh, in our appendix D so again for slope the minus a uh, slope is negative for counterclockwise the maximum diffraction diffraction is a uh, negative when it's downward okay so that's appendix D and this case is very straightforward so again that has been uh, uh, exercised before so I skip of the detail so probably you can see the previous slides the lectures uh, probably two okay so from there you can see the detail so the loading case two here I want to demonstrate a little bit more here so for this case you can see this beam is only loaded in this portion let me highlight from A to C okay this beam is only loaded in AC and in BC that is free of loading free of loading what that means the bin if bin is free of loading you think about what is this situation when the bin is under no loading which means the beam is not deformed so that means the beam will keep his original shape whatever his original shape is he will keep its shape so when the beam is under no loading, it's won't, it is not deformed. So for this case, the portion BC is not deformed, okay? So in beam segment BC, because it's not deformed, is, um, his original shape is a straight line, so it will keep us a straight line. Okay, keep this in mind. So this is a very interesting observation and that is the main purpose I pick up these illustrations because that is kind of funny the the uh, the characteristic I but this one will allow you to um, um, to solve for the similar problems because that's a kind of new things so I adopt this one. Okay. So now we uh, in this case we see our goal is to determine the diffraction at B and our goal is to find the slope at B here okay so that is the one here so how to determine this one basically you can see this one can be determined by this and only AC is diffracted so let me take out this portion here so let me say this one is called the Y2 and at point C so this is a point C okay and how to use this one let me use the symbols uh, consistent with our uh, textbook so this is diffraction at point C okay this is for loading case 2 okay and then also at C here I take the tangent and the tangent has the slope and this slope and let me use is this the slope is using the symbol theta at point C that corresponding to the loading case 2 okay that is a symbol here 
So basically here you can see um, because this is line is tangent so that means the tangent will be continued so the slope at point B will be equal to this one. Can you see? So because the BC keep as a straight line, the straight line because BC is not deformed. So not deformed portion and will keep his original shape, which for this case is straight line. So that means at C and B, the slope must be the same. Okay, so that is the first one. The second one and the relations between the two quantity is this. They mean uh, eliminate something to get more uh, illustrations, okay? So from here you can see, let me highlight here. So let me draw a parallel line and horizontally. Okay, so this portion basically is this one. And how about this one? This one, can you see, this one is equal to this triangle. This is a triangle. Okay, let me highlight here. That is the triangle here. And for this triangle, the length is equal to L over 2 by this. And this, what is this? This is the angle or slope at C, or that is this one, okay? So this is the angle, and this one equal to theta C2, basically equal to this one, okay? And this one usually uh, for small diffraction is very small. So basically you can see this case should be equal to L over 2. Oops, let me get better writing here. <coughs> so this case, this one will be equal to L over 2 times, you can say tangent theta, but here the theta C is very small. So basically that is theta C and 2. Okay. So basically that one, let me implement L over 2 multiplied with omega L3 and 48 EI. Okay, so that one equal to 96 EI omega L to the fourth. Okay, so, <coughs> so basically here the relation is this case. Okay, so basically this portion is from here. Okay, and then this portion is this portion here okay so the relation between is this one and then now we can simply focus in on what is the slope here you can answer our questions here so at point C that is a slope and then let me find out the remaining is uh, basically okay so basically here the remaining is we find out what is the yc what is this term and what is this term for this term basically that corresponding the case is this let me rewrite the original problem here so this is a portion and l over 2 and let me copy this one then this is the under the loading the loading is uh, putting upward okay so that is a loading case like this one so from here we could be uh, we could uh, direct, directly apply the tables. From the table equation is such that if the beam has a length L, then the patterns of the diffraction is W times length of the beam to the fourth power divided by AEI. So we adopt this one. So here, let me uh, get more drawing. So diffraction, let me use the different color. How about that? So this is the diffraction here, okay? So diffractions, again, we adopt this pattern. Omega times L is the, the length of the beam. So the length of beam for this case is L over 2. I simply adopt this pattern here. And this is Young's module of E and I, okay. And now for this case, because it is diffracted upward, so here rather than use minus, I use positive. 
again here the diffraction is a negative downward positive upward that's our sign convention here okay so that is uh, for this case and oh AEI okay so for this one we implemented that would be a times 1628 EI Omega L to the fourth power so this portion is this one okay now the slope so now for this case we look for the slope here so we we'll look for the slope here okay so the slope again we adopt this pattern here the magnitude equal to omega times the length to the cube the three the third power so length is l over two okay and then divide by six ei and again right now this slope is the counterclockwise so here the slope our sign convention is negative uh, clockwise positive counterclockwise so here we take the positive so implementation of this one is 6 times 8 48 ei and omega l to the cube so that is the number here okay so once you have this one, then basically that two formulations accordingly be calculated for this case. Okay, so once you have done, then we superpose the whole things together. So here is the summarize from previous case. We have individually solved for the diffraction and slope at the tip here, and we simply take them uh, summing up together, then that will be the slope and the diffraction of the original uh, the given problem statement here okay so again this problem and uh, in particular for the loading case too that kind of involve a little bit more kind of the uh, detailed uh, calculation steps and again if needed and uh, you can rewind and see this one okay